excited to speak to you all today about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, communicating with confidence. And I'll explain the hero part a little bit later. But here's what happened, okay? Kristen came to me recently and she said, Glenn, we've got a lot of new members in the club and I think it would be great if we had an expert in public speaking do a presentation for the team. But she said, we can't find an expert at the moment, so could you do it? <laughs> so that's why I'm here. With an invitation like that, how could I refuse? While I don't claim to be an expert, I do have an extensive background in this topic. It's been a little bit of a passion of mine for many years. I started out with the Dale Carnegie program about 20 years ago. And essentially, I learned everything I know about delivering a clear, concise message with a call to action from that program. And I liked it so, so much I went back twice and served as an assistant instructor because I figured out you could essentially take the class again for free if you volunteered in that capacity. And then of course, Toastmasters over the last about five years has accelerated my learning tremendously, mostly through practice, 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 repetition. And here's what I've learned. Confidence is what it's all about for communication. Think about it. If you're going to stand up in front of a group of people and convince them to do something, change some behavior, take some action, you better be confident and believe in what you're saying if you're going to expect them to believe what you're saying, right? So confidence is key. And developing that confidence has a couple of huge benefits. Number one, self-esteem. It's huge for self-esteem. Knowing that you can express yourself confidently will boost your self-esteem tremendously. Secondly, there's a financial incentive, right? I read a stat recently. 87% of a person's income can be directly attributed to that person's ability to confidently, confidently stand in front of a group and convey a message, okay? So, what are we saying? Essentially, communication equals compensation. And I don't know about you, but I like compensation. Who here likes compensation? Hey, All right, my people. Now, you may be thinking, Glenn, you're preaching to the choir. We're in Toastmasters. We get it. We get the importance of communication. That's why we're here. Problem is, when I get up in front of a group of people, I feel like this. And I'm calling Mayday, Mayday. And my brain is doing this. <laughs> Can anyone relate? Okay. I've been there. I feel your pain. That's why I want to try to help you out a little bit with some tips that I've learned over the years. Now, there's probably a thousand tips to help with public speaking. I'm just going to share four with you today. And that's where the HERO acronym comes in. That's the acronym I'm going to use to, to highlight these tips that have helped me and maybe they'll help you. So what does a hero do to be a confident communicator? One thing they, they do is incorporate humor, right? You ever found when you, when you can get a laugh from the audience or even a smile, it relaxes the audience, puts them at ease, but what it does for you is even more important. You, you get that confidence to know, oh, okay. I'm connecting a little bit, and it helps relax you. So you don't have to be a stand-up comedian, but if you can incorporate a little bit of humor, it's going to help you a lot with your confidence. Secondly, what I want to highlight is something I call expression, not impression. What I mean here is, to the best of your ability, you should focus on what you're trying to express, not the impression you're making on the audience. If you're worried about how you look, how you sound, are people judging me, that's a huge waste of energy, counterproductive. <coughs> Keep your mind laser focused on what you're trying to convey. And try to block out all that extraneous thought, because that'll just bring you down. That's, your brain will be distracted by all that. Third point, reframe, I like this one. Reframe nervousness into excitement. 
Think about nervousness. Your heart quickens. Maybe your mouth gets a little dry. There's an anticipation. How is that different from excitement? You're about to go on a roller coaster or meet a beautiful girl or a handsome guy. You're excited, right? But with nervousness, it's so negative. Oh, I'm so nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. You drag yourself down, you create a negative energy. Next time you feel that feeling before speech, that's not a bad thing. You're excited. You're about to get up and talk to people. You're excited. Enjoy it. You know what that means? That excitement, that heartbeat, that's a sign of life, right? It's not a bad thing. So it's a subtle difference, but just making that little shift can help you be a little less nervous. The last one is oomph. What the heck is oomph, Greg? What I mean by that is enthusiasm. But O makes the acronym so much better than E. Because what the heck would here be? That wouldn't be that good. But enthusiasm is important when you're going to deliver a message. Because it gets you going. It, it gets your excitement level going. And it helps the audience as well get excited about what you're talking about. And then at the end of the day, even if, even if they say, well, that wasn't a really a great presentation, but man, that guy was really excited about it. He was enthusiastic. And people appreciate that, right? What's worse than sitting in a meeting and being bored to death? So those are the tips I want to share with you guys today. I hope they're useful to you. If you guys have tips, I'd love to hear them as well because this is a journey, right? Getting better at this is a lifetime journey. And as I said before, <coughs> The bottom line, right? Show me the money. You know this, Greg. Com good communicators rise in the ranks. So communication equals compensation. And if you want to be a better communicator, be a hero. Mr. Toastmaster.